morning. Uh, first, let's get my childhood photo out of the way. Some years ago, faculty speakers felt the need to prove we didn't apparate fully grown to the Brooks campus. First slide. Well, that's not me as a kid, but actually this is a portrait that Abby Duckworth, class of 23, painted for the clue set. <coughs> While I'm flattered, look at all the hair, I confess I really didn't know what to do with it. Like, you can't really put it up anywhere. If I put it in my classroom, my kids would freak out. If I put it in my home, my kids would freak out. Uh, kind of creeps me out, <laughs> honestly. Uh, this is uh, really a little me, second slide. Oh, yeah. Uh, so this is me with my siblings and Babe the Cow, uh, our farm of cows and sheep and pigs. And chickens was my dad's hobby when we were growing up. It's been a while since I last addressed the Brooks community. In the days before COVID, when I used to be in Mrs. Waters' role, I was in front of the student body four times a year. I gave short speeches at the Academic Integrity Chapel in October, at the opening chapel of winter term, at the cum laude chapel in April, and at the lawn ceremony under the tent in May. I confess I do miss awarding the René Champollion French Prize, because I just like saying that. Uh, because I spoke in public so frequently, I didn't feel the need to subject students to too much of me. Admittedly, many of these talks weren't especially memorable. On two occasions, however, I did quite get quite a bit of feedback both positive and negative. At the 2009 lawn ceremony, I told the audience that Brooks deserved an arts program equivalent to the other academic departments. And I hope the Brooks community would support such a program. We were doing a disservice to our current students and we were missing out on some great kids who love the arts. Some people told me afterward, we didn't need that. On the contrary, I think I've been proven right. And at my last chapel talk in January of 2015, I said the following. We need to talk about race, all races, about gender, about class, regularly. Not to do so means minimizing their importance, especially to those who are forced because of their circumstances to think of themselves as different every day. White people at Brooks rarely have to. Proclaiming and wishing we are all equal doesn't make it so. I'm a white, heterosexual, English-speaking old guy who was a financial aid student. I hope we'll gather together more often to talk about issues that affect and impact us all. It's okay to acknowledge we're all different, that we have different backgrounds, different lenses. I know many would rather not talk about differences. That is exactly why we should. Some people told me afterward we didn't need that. On the contrary, I think I was proven right. The origin of today's talk began with a long car ride with birthday boy, Mr. Chapman. We drove to Maine to visit old Brooks friends, including Mr. Hale, whom some of you know, at the home of Alden Flanders, a banjo playing former chaplain at Brooks. On the way home, we talked a lot about chapel after Mr. Chapman told me that he loved you all, I volunteered that I'd been considering a fall chapel talk. And after he told me that he loved you all again, he encouraged me to give it a go. So here I am. As it turns out, I do have something I want to share. This summer, I made a big mistake. Not a small error, not a little goof, an embarrassing, pretty big public mistake. When we first came to Brooks in 1998, the Lathams moved into Peabody House. At that time, you didn't have much choice about the color of your apartment walls. They could be white or white. In 2023, mostly due to the aesthetic sensibilities of women on campus, you are allowed to choose three colors for your new home. This summer, we moved from Blake to what used to be Mr. Price's what is officially known as New Faculty Unit 1B, next to Ms. Hanlon and Mr. K and Mr. Nam. Ms. Martin, the head of facilities, sent us a book of what are called color swatches to help us make our paint selections. Mrs. Latham and I took a look 
and I emailed Ms. Martin our choices. We actually picked just two colors, a light blue for upstairs and what I thought was an off-white for downstairs. Done. In July, after the prices had departed and the painters had completed their work and before the moving trucks arrived, my son Tristan and I started to move boxes over to our new place. As we unloaded, I said to Tristan, don't the walls look kind of pink to you? Tristan replied, I don't think so, Dad, but I'm colorblind, remember? <laughs> I started to get this really bad feeling. Then Mrs. Latham arrived. Here's what she saw. Slide three. <laughs> she said, am I living in a Barbie house? I said, I can't believe that was the color I picked. I checked my email. That was the color I picked. Somehow, it didn't look nearly as pink on paper as it did on the wall, but I did choose it, and boy, was it pink. So rule number one when you make a mistake, own it. I apologize to my wife. This was my fault. I needed to take responsibility for my mistake, and I needed to fix it. Rule number two when you make a mistake, do not email. Talk, preferably in person, directly and honestly to the people affected. At Brooks, if you need something done, there are a few go-to people you can count on. One of them is Hillary Young's mom. She works in facilities. I went to Mrs. Young and, deeply embarrassed, told her what I'd done. I'd created a Barbie house, and I didn't want to live in a Barbie house. <laughs> know that the painters at Brooks are extremely busy in the summer, and they were especially busy this summer. Could they please come back and paint it white? Rule number three when you make a mistake, accept and reflect upon the consequences that you created. Thankfully, Mrs. Young and Ms. Martin accepted my apology and took pity on me. The painters could come back in a few weeks. However, that meant everything the movers had just deposited in our apartment needed to be away from the walls and covered for a few days. The walls needed to remain bare. That also meant I was in the doghouse for a while. My family made a lot of cracks about the Barbie house as did my friends on the facility staff. I felt pretty dumb, but I deserved it. Next time, I will check and check again with my family before making any color-related decision that affects them. The painters did come back, but because I couldn't move the bookshelves out of my office, a pink wall remains in front of my desk for me to reflect on every day. <laughs> no one's perfect. We all make mistakes. Just remember, when you do, own it, talk directly and honestly to the people affected, and accept and reflect upon the consequences. You'll be glad you did. Thank you.